The only reason why I don't hang on to these is because I just don't have room in my house. I am a monster for special pieces of furniture that make my home feel like it has character, history, and charm, while also being your version of beauty. Sometimes it's just hard to find these kinds of pieces, or you may feel like what you have isn't good enough and you don't want to ruin your furniture by painting it wrong. However, if you don't take the risk, you're going to have that lingering feeling of your home being incomplete, never finished, and as though you are living in someone else's home. That's why I'm excited to share with you the pieces that are going to help you articulate and visualize what you have imagined. So let's walk through the best chalk finish paint furniture makeover transformations currently in my shop that might inspire you to take on your very own DIY projects. One of my favorite pieces of furniture to use is an armoire all throughout my home and my client's home to use as a storage piece where you would naturally put away blankets, sweaters, holiday pieces, and maybe even your television. You'll see all of these gorgeous floral motifs little egg and dart rope carvings that have a lot of meaning in the history of furniture, which I want to bring into my home and my shop. So that's how I know this would be a great candidate for a makeover because it's got those timeless details that are going to create that history in our homes. Now the very first thing I did was of course clean up my piece because I am sure this cabinet is probably a couple of hundred years old. The next thing I did was to create the colors that I wanted to see on this armoire. Here you can see I took inspiration from all of the other furniture and decor in this area of my shop. For you, you can look around your house and match your colors, easy enough. So I took two of our paint colors, our chalk finish paint. One is called French Gray, one is called Belgian Blue, and they created a custom blend 50-50 of each of those. The way I like to do this is to simply use a food storage container with a lid and a teaspoon so I can recreate the base that I want to use. So you can take a teaspoon of one color, a teaspoon of another color, mix it up, test it, be sure you like it. And if you do, increase the number of spoons to give you enough paint to work on your project. Now this was a big project and that's why I love using the containers with the lid so I could close it and then come back and work on it again the next day. So once I got to the color I liked, this entire armoire was painted with that blend of 50% of Belgian blue and 50% French gray. So I let that dry and in the next step, I actually applied one more coat of the exact same paint blend. Once I completed the base coat of my armoire, I had to decide how I wanted to accentuate the details. I knew Belgian blue and Chambord gray would be the right colors to add onto this piece. And the next step was to decide where those colors were going to go to best enhance the feelings of the room and the feeling of this piece. For some of these larger pieces that had a lot of curves and movements, I was gonna use Belgian blue because it's a lighter color and would be a little softer in the contrast of color. Next, I decided to use Chambord Gray here on these really fine details to give me that extra little pop so you could see all of the beautiful details on this piece. So here I knew I didn't want to change the color, I just wanted to soften the effect. So what I decided next was to use a dry brush technique to go over the pieces that were heavy Chambord or heavy Belgian Blue and kind of make them feel a little seamless as if they flowed right into the other with the level of contrast between those two colors. Now once this was all dry, I finally moved on to probably what you've been waiting for, the distressing of the painted finishes. I use a very light hand to distress or remove, knock off a little bit of the paint where the piece would naturally age. That's gonna be in the seams, in the cracks, along the edges where doors may already have natural splits from moisture. And of course, where people would already touch the piece with their hands or maybe their hips or their shoulders rubbing against the different areas of your project. If you're really not sure, you can avoid some of the larger parts of your doors and follow along where the door already has some natural gaps to keep you on guide. And when you're working on a continuous piece, maybe tell yourself, pick your fingers up every six inches so you don't create big, heavy, distressed paint removal marks all throughout your project. 
So of course I use sandpaper when I'm doing my distressing, but one of my other favorite tools to use is a little scraper when I wanna keep it light and focused. It helps me not get carried away with my distressing. And last but not least, I used a little bit of our gray antiquing glaze right in this area where hands would have been, where this would have gotten a lot of wear and tear to give it that beautiful aged patina and make it feel like that worn, loved, loved in feeling that we wanna bring into our home. Speaking of warm and patina, let's go over to the next piece. It's often very hard to find a small scale breakfast table or dining table, much less one that had all of the character of this table. If you look on the side, you're gonna see all of these beautiful details and carvings and elegant shapes in the legs or the apron of the table, as well as on the sides of this top, which is so special because of this gorgeous inlay parquetry top. That is a very specialized type of woodwork that was often found in antique furniture and in the olden days and is actually making its way back in. The only problem is if you have a table like this or a piece of furniture like this and you wanna keep it in its original wood tone condition, it is extremely expensive to repair the piece, much less even find someone who knows how to do the repair work of this old world style of woodwork. So that's how I knew rather than spend the time and energy investing in something that would be super cost prohibitive, we would repair the damage as best as we could. And then this table would be a perfect candidate for a chalk finish paint makeover. So after cleaning up the whole table and the base, I first started with the base and the legs and apron of the table. On this table, I used latte beige all throughout the legs and the apron. Now once that was dry, I went back and did a second coat. Once that was dry, I went back in with a smaller detail brush and used Chantilly White to create a little soft contrast on the beautiful details of the legs of this piece of furniture. Once that was dry, I moved on to the top of the table. So I created a dilution of Chantilly White, meaning I take the paint with the same process I told you with my spoons and food containers, and started diluting my paint until I achieved the correct level of transparency that covered the damage but allowed the wood grain and this beautiful pattern to show through. And I'm very excited about this piece because it has a new life and I know it's gonna be so perfect in someone's home to give them the warmth and richness that this piece now has to offer. So now let's go take a look at the last piece, which is one of my favorites, and you're gonna see exactly why. This is a very large scale chest of drawers. And because of the bad shape of how I found this piece, I knew this would be a great piece to make over and lighten up so someone could easily add this into their home for all of the things that we may store in our closets and so forth. The goal of this piece was I wanted it to feel like the piece was already chambered gray all over and it was as if someone created a beautiful whitewash over it over time. But that's actually not how I got started. I started with a coat of Chantilly White all over this piece of furniture. Now once that was dry, I went back and added a second coat. Now once that was dry, I created a wash just like we did on the other table, but instead on this one I used Latte Beige and I decreased the amount of water so I got a little more heaviness with the coverage. So you can see in certain areas it's built up a little more, which is what I was looking for. I also used a really loose brush stroke so you could see those lines in the finish of that color. Once that was dry, I decided to use sandpaper and knock off a little bit of paint around the corners and then I came back and added this dark color that you're seeing all throughout kind of as some movement on this chest of drawers in those areas with sham board gray. The best way to do that is to ask yourself, where would this piece naturally age? And then of course, step back and look at your work before you go on to adding more or less. Now the effect I wanted to create on this piece was as though the original color was chambord gray, and then maybe I created a whitewash on top of it. So you can see here on the inside of the drawers, we have that beautiful chambord gray as if it were the original color of this piece of furniture. Last, I went back in and did a tiny bit of distressing, meaning removing some of the paint right here on the edges, and again, where the piece would naturally age. 
So now you can see how I knew these were great pieces that had the good bones and the character. Once I realized that pieces like these could be transformed beyond what they've always been, it helped me feel connected to the history of these pieces, give my home the warmth and home goodness I wanted, express my personal style in my home, and I didn't have to settle on furniture that just wasn't me. So this is one of my absolute favorite pieces of, wait, hold on, is this where you want me to stop? So now let's go take a look, take a look. <laughs> we did already take a look. So now let's go take a look at, I say take a look again. You said it correctly, but you said it slow. Okay. <laughs> so now let's go take a look at my last favorite piece. Oh my God, I just keep mixing up the words now. <laughs> uh, let's go take a look. I love this piece because of its large scale profile, which is not my <laughs> because it's storage and it's function. 